Hey parents, Dr. Tony Ebel checking in here and we're going to talk about chronic cough and we're going to talk about something called croup. Now, if you are a parent whose child has gone through croup like me, you know exactly what I'm talking about and you wish you didn't because honestly, the first part of this video, chronic cough, that stinks enough to know that every time your kiddo gets teething, starts teething or gets a cold, like it just seems to get locked in there and they're always coughing, they're always hacking, it really keeps them up at night especially because this chronic cough stuff and especially croup always gets worse at night and you just want to get them to the other side of this you just want to stop worrying hey if we get another cold the next time they're going through teething the next time we get into spring or fall or winter or these seasonal changes is my kid going to keep coughing and then if you're like us with my son Oliver well then croup is a part of your story too and it's that deep barking really really your child is struggling to breathe cough now now, those are heavy words and those are heavy nights. Those are long nights when your child is going through croup and having those struggles. And again, I know. So our son Oliver was born with a really tough traumatic birth. He was born a little bit early and then due to the physical trauma he experienced into his neck, into his brainstem, and even into his upper thoracic, so we may call it in this video, his upper torso region. Those are the regions that supply the lungs, the throat, the lymphatics. And so he had a physically traumatic birth that really created a lot of challenges with his respiratory system. So with breathing and with oxygenation and really what we're going to talk about today, plumbing and drainage and getting mucus and getting inflammation and getting crud out of the body. And because of those tough challenges early on, six weeks in the NICU, he had to have antibiotics, he had to have steroid medications. He was really facing an uphill battle with the development of his respiratory system. And so every time he would get a couple of teeth or every time he would pick up a little bit of a cold. We, he had an older sister. I'm a pediatric chiropractor, so we are always serving kids who are getting stronger as they get through illnesses. We'll talk a lot about that context and different viewpoint and strategies here in this video. And so there was three times in the first year of his life that we were up all night, a couple nights in a row, with Oliver really struggling with croup. Two out of those three times, my wife ended up taking taking him into the emergency room and into the urgent care. And thankfully, only once, only one night, did we have to do a tiny little droplet of a, um, what's called an oral-based steroid medication. So out of all the chronic cough, and out of the three different really tough bouts, chronic cough goes into croup. Out of those tough bouts, Oliver only had to have a tiny little drop of medication one time. And I want to talk about that right away. That is something most parents don't get to experience. See, when Christina took Oliver in there, immediately what they wanted to do was load him up on a nebulizer. I mean, within minutes, they were pushing two different medications for Oliver. Number one, a nebulizer, which is a steroid-based anti-inflammatory medication to open up the airways using medication, using chemicals. And then they wanted to put him on antibiotics all uh, every time. Even though we know almost every cough, almost every cold, almost every every croup, almost every respiratory illness is viral, they were going to load him up on steroid medications and they were going to load him up on antibiotics. Now, even if Oliver hadn't gone through his tough beginning where he needed those life-saving medications, so you may hear me just, if you, if you really missed this while I'm trying to get it right there to you, parent to parent, we're not anti-medication. We're not anti-antibiotic. We're not anti-nebulizer. We're not anti-corticosteroids. But if we throw them at every cough and we throw them at every Every illness and croup is one not to be messed with. Trust me, there will be a time Oliver needed it that one night we didn't do the nebulizer, we did an oral steroid so it wouldn't be so side effect riddled. And I'll talk about that. But it is a really tough decision to go the natural route, to go the chiropractic route when your child is struggling. Maybe not so much with just coughs and kind of simple colds, but when it gets into the land of things like RSV or croup, it can be really hard to take a different natural immune boosting and immune building route instead of the medication route, which just shuts it down, suppresses it, and hey, you get through the night, they can sleep easier. But what we know about medications for respiratory illnesses like chronic cough and croup is the more often we use them, the more often we set up our child for long-term consequences of asthma, allergies, autoimmune issues. See, again, it's a really, really, really tough decision for both a provider and a parent. I got to cheat. 
I am a provider. I was a trained, experienced pediatric chiropractor, and not a lot of people know it, but pediatric chiropractors are on the same level as pediatricians and medical doctors in that we can serve as a primary care doctor for a family. In fact, we do for hundreds of our PwC families, like we did with Oliver, they turn towards us first to try and help a child get through an illness like chronic cough or croup without medications and then leave the medications for last resort. So yes, you heard that right. It is literally everything in reverse. Whereas most families would seek out things like chiropractic or natural health as a means of last resort or last defense, families like ours seek out chiropractic and natural health and things I'm about to map out for you as a first defense and as a first choice. And then we still have medications like that one night for Oliver. Thank God for them if we need them. If our natural health, chiropractic, neurologically boosting defenses can't get the job done, okay, very rarely, last resort, we have medication. And then we limit the weakening. We limit the suppression of the medications and we maximize how a child builds resilience and builds health. So let's go over to the iPad here. Let's get a little bit nerdy and let's teach you exactly step by step when Oliver had those coughs, when he had croup and we did those adjustments. So we do this for literally thousands of other kiddos. Oliver is just a story. Obviously, I know best because I was his father and his pediatric chiropractor helping him get through this. Let's map out the exact science and the exact steps as to how this job gets done. Now, notice what I say here first. The word is help. The word is support. The word is boost. There isn't a single thing that chiropractic looks to treat or cure. We do not use the word treatment and we stay millions of galaxies away from the word cure. We take care of a child's nervous system and the nervous system controls the immune system, respiratory system, digestive system. So when you improve neurological function through chiropractic care. And then we'll, tease, we'll sneak in a little bit about other natural health defenses. And I'll put a link to a really cool, what we call Raising Healthy Kids Naturally playbook, which will talk about vitamins and supplements and other things you can do in addition to adjustments to boost the immune system and to boost the nervous system. That's what we're doing. So we are in increasing function within the body so that the body gets through and over the illness faster, better, and more long-term health building responses on its own. So we're not doing the work for it. We are supporting and aiding and boosting. And the way we can teach you that is we first have to look at the negative side. We got to look at the troublemaking side of this thing called subluxation. Now, subluxation has three components to it. Number one, we're going to come over here and we'll map out the first couple components. The first pieces of subluxation are misalignment within the body, within the what we call the neurospinal system. So the nerves, the muscles, the ligaments, the lymphatics, everything is getting jammed up and stuck. I should go right to that. So so fixation comes from misalignment. These two things really go together in subluxation. So think of it as stuck tension. That's the first part of subluxation that relates heavily, significantly to chronic cough and croup. Because what's happening, the reason a child is looking to cough and looking to do that is they're looking to break up this tension. Because when you have chronic tension, you then have congestion. So now the mucus and the fluid and the crud there, all right, my Iowa farmer term on there, can't get out of the throat and it can't get out of the lymphatics and it can't get out of the lungs when subluxation with that stuck tension, misalignment and fixation is there. So we call all of this, again, back to my farmer terminology, we call this part poor plumbing, all right? So if you have any stuck tension in a drain, any any, any kind of misalignment, fixation, or congestion in a drainage pipe in your house, you're going to have crud and you're going to have not good things get stuck up in the system and not get out and through it. So the first part of subluxation is poor drainage, poor plumbing, and it comes from the components of subluxation that create tension and fixation. So because we were talking about boogers and crud and green, we made that one, uh, or sorry, boogers and mucus and congestion, we made that one green. So now let's just keep our color scheme going here because the iPad allows me to do this and I love teaching. I am married to a teacher. I teach all the time. So yes, you're even getting a color-coded education 
informational video here. Please share this with families who have kids who are always sick, always struggling with cough, always dealing with croup, always on antibiotics, always on inhalers, really, really struggling. Even if it's years later and they're already struggling with allergies and asthma and autoimmune issues, I bet that child's case history was colic and croup and congestion and chronic cough when they were littler. So, all right, second part of subluxation. That is a not good arrow. But the second part of subluxation is it creates neuro... So here's, we're on the nerdier stuff. Neuroimmune, oh man, I cannot write today when I'm bragging about my iPad. Neuroimmune interference, okay? So I'll abbreviate these. Interference, an imbalance of neuroimmune function causes increased inflammation and increased mucus production. So we make a lot of videos about this component of subluxation. Really what it is, it's when the sympathetic system, which is our fight or flight system, becomes overly excited, overly stimulated. And so tension creates tension. It creates that sympathetic dominance. And so what's awesome about a chiropractic adjustment is when we go in there, what we're adjusting is that subluxation. It is that tension. We release that tension. We break up that tension and we get, and we break up and release that congestion. And uh, the first thing that parents respond to and tell us all the time after their child, who's got chronic cough, got croup, got these things, after they get adjusted, they just start to drain. They start to clear out their sinuses and their throat and their lungs so much easier. And remember, what are we talking about with this? Without medications. And then at the same time, the inflammation goes down, the mucus production goes down, the fight or flight response goes down. And really what you're able to do, let's go back to green, we'll go to blue is good, I don't know. By doing everything on the top end, you're able to avoid medications because every time a child gets a round of steroids or antibiotics, we know that there is in increased risk, so increased risk or what's called incidence, meaning the rate of things like allergies and asthma and autoimmune conditions later on. See, that's the challenge with going to medications, whether corticosteroids, antibiotics, or even over-the-counter things like, I don't even know what they are, your Flonase, your Mucinex, your fever reducers. So this isn't just a prescription medication conversation. This is an all medication conversation. Medications get into the system and do the job for the body. And what happens is the way God designed us is he knew our kids were going to have teeth. He knew our kids were going to get a cold and get a cough. And there is defense systems in there. The first system is our plumbing system. If things can keep moving, then those viruses and those bacteria and those germs can get out of the body. If subluxation and that stuck tension is in the way, things can't get out and they're what called they're called opportunistic infections or pathogens where they can keep replicating and build up more mucus and build up more congestion. So again, if you want to avoid medication, the first thing you got to focus on is the plumbing and the drainage of the body. And then also the second thing to focus on is is my child's nervous system stressed out? Is it in that sympathetic dominant pro-inflammatory state. And we can actually measure this. We can find this tension. The thing I haven't mentioned yet, I'll mention this, then I'll tell you exactly how to find this in your child and get the natural route. Get the chiropractic immune boosting route instead of the medication immune suppressing route. The number one thing that causes subluxation is stress during pregnancy and especially birth interventions like C-section, forceps, vacuum, or inductions, or any sort of physically traumatic tension to the neck, the skull, and the torso, especially so where the lungs are at birth. Breach positioning during pregnancy can do it. And then the other thing is that kiddos today spend a lot of time in a car seat or in a baby carrier, and that creates all of this subluxation and tension in their neck and in their upper torso regions, and it locks that subluxation in place. And until those, and then the fixation, and then the congestion, and then the inflammation, 
and this whole cascade and that child can't kick the sick. They can't get through the cough. They can't get through the croup on their own. So that's where families feel forced to put those medications into the system. And along come the long-term consequences of a child who gets sick and gets allergies and gets asthma. And honestly, for a lot of families, they just report to us, my child's never not sick, even when they're not, quote unquote, in an acute inflammatory um, infection, they're just congested. The bags under their eyes, the coughing all the time, the congested all the time, the fatigued all the time, the taking medications and, and allergy medications all the time. I could go on and on. I have gone on and on. The way you find this, and you'll see images of it inside the articles on our website or by clicking around on the website and finding the content. You'll see it right in the article. It talks about these things called the insight scans. Now, the coolest thing in the world is not only is a chiropractor trained to find these subluxation and tension by hand and make these soft, gentle, easy adjustments to go along with it, but we are also trained to find it through this incredible technology, which can help us measure inflammation and irritation on the nervous system through what we call these neurothermal scans. And then especially we can measure this muscular and neuromuscular tension through the EMG. And we also run one other scan called HRV, which says how suppressed, how worn out, how beat down is your child's neuroimmune system. We can run these safe, non 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 um, what's what I'm looking for? They're just crazy safe um, scans and they take information from your child. There's nothing going in, that's what I was going to say, nothing going in like an x-ray and MRI. They're measuring information, inflammation and information from your child's system. Get connected with your local PX doc. If you're local to me and our practice PWC, get connected with us. But that is where you can find the missing link that's probably been there from birth for your child, creating the chronic cough, creating the cascade of effects in the nervous system, in the respiratory system, and in the immune system that is even leading to croup. And so if you want to get ahead of this and get through this naturally without drugs and without medication, get on our website, read the articles about croup and chronic cough. Take a look at those inside scans, watch more videos, and as soon as you are ready, get to our directory, get to one of our docs, and get the answers and the drug-free action steps that you've been searching for to get your child healthy in the short term and most importantly in the long term as well.